Hey, what's up? My name is Jordan Valeriat of Hardcore Music Studio, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the top six essential plugins for mixing metal, mixing heavy music. And these are the plugins that I've been using for five, ten years on pretty much every single mix I do. So let's just dive right into it. I'm going to play you a little bit of this mix. This is a song called Abyss by the band Auras. So the first plugin on my list is the Waves SSL channel. And man, I just love this thing. It is all over my mix. It's on my kick, snare top, snare bottom. It's my toms, it's on the bass, it's on the guitars, it's on the vocals. It's pretty much my essential EQ. It's it's basically what I use for all the musical EQ, all the boosting. I don't know don't so much use it for, you know, any any surgical cuts and stuff like that but it really is the, the tone shaping plugin that I use across almost every single track in the mix. And I think you need to have a nice kind of musical EQ that you can, you can also really push pretty hard. So for metal, for heavy music like this, you really kind of want that punchy, kind of high attack, almost like ticky top end to cut through the mix. So you need to be able to push this fairly hard. We're doing almost eight dB on the top end here. sucking out a bunch of mid-range. Then I love this SSL channel too because it's got the gate built in. You can see I'm using the gate on this kick drum. It's also got a compressor. So with the slow attack, fast release here at three to one, sounds great on kick, sounds great on snare as well. And so I'm often using this EQ and compressor together for drums, uh, sometimes bass, but mostly drums and vocals. You can hear this on snare as well. See how that's totally reshaping the, the, the sound of the snare, adding a lot of top end here, but we can really boost this a lot. And uh, it sounds great, it sounds musical. Even if it kind of pushes into the red here, it kind of gives a nice, uh, a nice crunchy, aggressive sound. And uh, again, the compressor sounds great on snare. Let's see on snare bottom. Adding that sizzle. Cranking this all the way up, 15 dB at 8K. So super versatile EQ, like I said, it's it's my go-to channel strip, uh, doing most of my EQ. You can see even on vocals here as we get into the verse. Love the top end it adds and the bottom end too. It's just just a great plugin. I use it all over my mix and uh, definitely recommend it. So that's number one on my list. All right, the second plugin is actually from the same bundle from Waves and it's the SSL bus compressor. So I love this thing on my drum bus, on a parallel drum compression bus, and also on my mix bus in almost every case. So let's go to the mix bus first. <laughs> I'll typically mix into this plugin once I get, you know, maybe a 25% into the mixing process. I'll throw this on and I'll kind of mix into it. And I'm generally not doing a ton of gain reduction on it. Usually what you see now is, is kind of where I'm at. Usually not more than 4 dB of compression on the mix bus here. But you can hear it's a little subtle, but if you listen carefully, I'll switch back and forth. I'll switch it on and off for you. And you can hear how when it's on, it just kind of, tightens up and contains the mix in, in the best possible way. It just kind of was, almost puts kind of a little barrier around it and uh, wraps it up in a nice bow. Again, it's subtle, but when the compressor's in there, it's just the mix kind of just glues together and it kind of moves and breathes as one. And these are the uh, settings that I would always use, a 10 millisecond attack, uh, four to one ratio, and then the auto release. Sounds great. Uh, and like I said, I also use it on drum bus. So if we go over to my drums here, I've got two drum buses here, so let me mute the parallel. Again,
Again, this is subtle too. I'm not doing a bunch. I'm kind of just, just grazing it here. This time with the, the slowest attack, 30 milliseconds and a lower ratio and uh, the fastest release. And this is just adding a little bit of extra, extra push, extra attack to the drums. Listen to the snare especially. It's not a huge difference. But it is pushing kind of the kick and snare and attack forward a little bit. And then if we look at my parallel compression bus here, so this is a parallel uh, drum compression bus. This time, uh, 10 to one ratio, still the slow attack, fast release, but really cranking it. And this is essential. This is in all of my mixes. I love what it does to the snare. Like if you listen to that crack and attack this does to the snare, That is the sound, that, that's the snare sound that I want. That's the crack. But of course you can't crush your whole drum bus like this and have that as your drum sound in the mix. So it's perfect for a parallel drum track. So if we bring that back down where it was, just mix that in underneath the other drum bus. So SSL bus comp, my second essential plugin. It's always on my drum buses and almost always on my mix bus. All right, essential plugin number three is Trigger 2 from Slate Drums. And look, in heavy music, in metal, in rock, really a lot of genres, often you need to enhance, at least enhance and augment the live drum sounds or in some unfortunate cases, totally replace uh, kick and snare with drum samples. And Trigger is by far the best plugin, the most accurate triggering plugin I've ever used. It's extremely quick to audition samples, choose the sound I want, and then lay it down to a track. So here it is on uh, my kick trigger. Let's see if I mute the trigger track here. And this is a great example of just augmenting the kick. It's not totally replacing. In fact, uh, if you mute the real kick, the trigger's not really mixed in that hot, but it really adds a lot, just kind of fills out that top end attack. And like I said, this plugin's super accurate. I like to print it down. That's why you see here, I have my kick sample track printed down. Uh, and man, it is, uh, if we zoom in on these transients here, it nails it right every single time. And don't worry, yes, I know that that looks like it's out of phase, but our live kick, we have the phase reversed. So uh, don't worry, it's good. I'll show you the same thing on snare. If we load up our trigger track here, again, here it is without it. So pretty good snare sound. If we add the trigger. So in both cases here, I'm using a, a mix of a number of samples these two here, uh, these are from my personal sample library. We've got kind of a blended snare sound. We've got one of my uh, main go-to snare samples here. And then we've got this single shot, which is literally just, just one shot sample that sounds super aggressive. And we've got this old drum machine, uh, Alexis drum machine sample here called Fat City to add some low end. So it's pretty handy how you can blend uh, a number of different samples in here. Usually I'm not doing more than two or three. Uh, and I've got my sample library here. Pretty much use only samples that I've created. Here's a new one that I just created with uh, an upcoming course I'm doing for ProMix Academy with Warren. Uh, let's check that one out in this mix. even blend that in with the other snares here. So 
So trigger two, definitely essential mixing this kind of music. If you need to augment or replace your drums at all, just get this plugin. It's it's the most accurate, it's the most easy to use and uh, super versatile as well. Fourth plugin on the list is the Waves C4. You could also use the C6, but uh, I'm just used to the C4. And this is a multiband compressor that I use to do two very specific jobs in the mix, in pretty much every mix. So the first place I use it is on the main rhythm guitars. And what this does, you'll see, I'll demo it for you. It really controls and tightens up the, the low end kind of boominess of a heavy guitar. And you know when you're, you're doing a heavy distorted rhythm guitar and you do the chugs like the jung 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 and the low end just like, just kind of rumbles up and swells up. So see that I've got this multiband compressor set. So it's only gonna be affecting the kind of low mid range between 100 Hertz and 400 Hertz. So what it's gonna do is gonna dip down that frequency range only on the parts where it's, it's kind of swelling up too much. So this is better than just scooping that out with an EQ because that's gonna make uh, our whole guitar tone sound thin. We're gonna be missing that low mid power, uh, but doing it this way, it's only gonna attenuate those frequencies when needed. So check this out. So you can hear on those chugs, if I bypass it, you'll hear how that mud is building up a lot more. And I love using this because it doesn't it doesn't thin out the rest of our tone. You can see when he's playing those higher notes there, it's not affecting it at all. It does a nice job of, of taming those chugs though. I'll exaggerate it a bit for you here. Really does a nice job of controlling those rhythm guitars. And then the second place, I'm pretty much always using it in the mix is on the bass. So my bass DI track here, this is the track I'm using for kind of the sub uh, low end of the bass. This time I'm just using the lower band. So pretty much everything from like 100 Hertz down, all those sub uh, rumbly frequencies. And so I'm just compressing those frequencies on their own. And the goal here is to compress that low end so that it's solid across wherever he's playing on the neck. It's just a solid low end sub range. And then once that's compressed, I can just use the gain control here, uh, the makeup gain from this compressor and just basically turn my sub low end up or down in the mix. So again, let's compress it a little more here. So really solidify that. You can see how some notes it's compressing less, some notes it's compressing more. That's giving us a nice even low end. And then we can just use the gain to decide how much sub low end we want. So that's one of my go-to techniques uh, for really nailing down the low end of the bass guitar in a heavy mix like this. All right, the fifth plugin on my essential list here is the CLA 76 compressor from Waves. Man, this thing, it, it just gives you that vocal sound, that aggressive upfront in your face vocal. I use it on singing vocals, just pretty much for any pop mix. But even in heavy music like this, it works just as well on screams. So listen to this A, B here and check out the, the kind of breaths in between the words and also kind of the, the start of the words, the consonants that he's saying. It just makes it hit that much harder, makes it sound like he's screaming that much harder. I absolutely love this compressor. I would not want to mix without it. It just it just is that vocal sound to me. Uh, so you see I'm using it on the melodic singing vocals here as well. And with the attack kind of right in the medium setting and the fastest release at four to one. And if you just kind of, you can see I'm pinning this meter. It sounds fantastic on lead vocal. What is the quality of life? Let me A-B that for you. What is the quality of life? What is the quality of life? I 
mean, this this compressor is so much a part of the vocal sound I go for that it's the first thing I insert on a vocal track, and it really gets me kind of 75% of the way there. And then, you know, I take it the rest of the way with uh, SSL channel EQing into it and then some de and saturation afterwards. Uh, but this compressor is fantastic for vocals. Uh, it's also great on bass and drums. You can see I'm using it on uh, my bass amp track here. Really can slam down a bass uh, very well and kind of keep it contained in the mix. And of course it's great, it's famous for, uh, you know, room tracks on drums. I like the black version on drums. It feels like a little bit of a, a quicker grab on the transients. Here how it's adding a lot of excitement to this room track. Got it here on this mono room track too. It's with the uh, all buttons in, the most aggressive version here. love that compressor for adding excitement. So we've talked about the SSL channel, the SSL bus compressor, Trigger 2, uh, Waves C4, and Waves CLA76. Uh, the number six essential plugin on the list is actually a wild card. It can be a number of different plugins, but it's an essential saturation and subtle distortion plugin. And I'm I'm hesitant to name just one here because I've, I've used a, a broad range of really great saturation plugins. So I'm going to show you two different ones here. One of my favorites ever is Crane Song Phoenix. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's a it's a Pro Tools only plugin. So I know a lot of people won't be able to get this one, but this just does an awesome job of just thickening up sounds and smoothing over sounds and kind of just subtly changing the tone in a way that is just different than EQ. So I use it on drums here. Listen to how it just fattens up those low mids. Again, it's subtle, but uh, I use it in a lot of different places in the mix on my bass as well. generating some really nice harmonics. I almost, I use saturation the way I think of it, whether it's Phoenix or some other plugins, it's just making the sound more of what it is, just having it take up more space and just fill it out a little bit. So it's on drums, bass, guitar, vocals on this mix. Here it is on the guitar. Just gives it that kind of extra 10% of size. Now, again, I know that you might not be able to grab this plugin, so I wanted to show you another one that I'm equally happy to use. I've been done many mixes, especially recently where I didn't use Phoenix at all, and I go to this one, uh, Sound Toys Decapitator. So let's check it out on bass. Here's the bass with Phoenix. I'll show you how we can achieve a similar thing with Decapitator. a similar job fattening up those low mids giving it more more beef in the mix and uh, it's got a number of different um, console or tube or tape I don't know different emulations here at the bottom and so you can kind of find the tone the saturation that works best uh, for this particular application so that sounds great there and again I would also swap this up for Phoenix on guitars so here it is with Phoenix but we can do a similar thing with Decapitator, this time in the E mode. And even if we just add a little bit here, you can hear how it's really um, just, again, making it bigger, just making it more of what it is, filling out the sound a little bit. So you've got to have a nice go-to saturation plugin. If you're looking for one, uh, Decapitator uh, is great because you can do the really subtle saturation like this and you can also crank it and uh, go into distortion, which is great too. I have a parallel steering wheel back here. And that's exactly what I've done on the snare. So 
So really adding some nice distortion there and then kind of tucking that into the mix uh, with the snare. So when you're mixing in the box, which I always do, always have done, uh, I, I use a lot of saturation. You can see uh, I have Crane Song Phoenix here on basically uh, every, almost every track here. There's some, there's some other keys tracks that I didn't use it, but it's on vocals, it's on my guitars, it's on my drums, it's on my bass. And again, I'm happy to swap that out for Decapitator. Uh, the Steven Slate plugin bundles also have some cool saturation in there that I'm happy to use, but you've got to have something that's going to give you that subtle saturation that's going to help you kind of shape the tones in a way that just makes the sounds bigger and just fills them out. And a little bit of that saturation is also going to help glue your mix together. And remember, it is it is called a mix. You do want things to mingle and overlap and, and kind of interact with each other. And I find that using a fair bit of saturation here, even if it's subtle on every track, it adds up and kind of adds a lot of extra life to your mix. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this rundown of the six essential plugins for mixing heavy music, mixing metal, and I uh, hope you enjoy the upcoming course I've got coming out with Warren very soon. Talk to you guys later.